I had gotten emailed a question, so I'll go ahead and show that one to you. And then we'll see if you have other questions also. So the question I got emailed was the Mindscape from 2.4. Where'd the cursor go? There we go. So Mindscape 27 from section 2.4 where the student's problem was to take 1787 and figure out what that was mod 7. So we take the calculator because those are those are big numbers the 1787 especially. We want to see how many times 7 goes into 1787 and then remove those multiples. So we say 1787 divided by 7 and we get 255 0.29 about. We're interested in the 255 because that tells us that 7 divides evenly into two, 1787 255 times and we can take out 255 multiples of 7. So see what that is. 255 times 7. That's 1785. So if we take out 255 multiples of 7, we're removing 1785 from 1787 and that leaves two. So two is equivalent to the 1787 mod seven. So we're taking out the multiples of the seven and see what's left after we do that. That's actually the remainder when you do division. So if we did division, we would say 1787 divided by 7 equals 255 remainder 2. So the other option, the other problem that all of you had on that section was to talk about the um, M being equivalent to the remainder mod n, where the r is the remainder, the m is the number that you're given right here, 1787 in this case, and the n is the 7. So that was something you had to pick from a drop down menu and everybody would pick the same answer there. Do you have other questions that you'd like to go over? Yes? Uh, yeah, more so just uh, the technique of understanding the difference between irrational digits and irrational digits with the never ending digits. Um, number number eight for two point seven. It's probably gonna be a different I, I understand the basics, but it's just uh, for the landscape zero eight, it's probably not gonna be the same number. Um two seven. Okay. But it shows uh, if I remember right, I think that one was pretty confusing. It shows a selection of long digits, and you have to yeah. tell which ones. I, I thought that was fairly confusing as well. Is it hard to see? Would it be better if I sh shut some of the curtains? Whenever you feel like you can't see, feel free to shut some of the curtains. That's still pretty tiny. I'll make that a little bigger. So we need numbers that are bigger than 14.1288378, but smaller than 14.1288379, and they have to be rational. The author 
of the problem should have put little dot dot dots because these these end in patterns that are supposed to continue um, for example this one ending in zeros is supposed to continue in zeros this one's supposed to continue in threes this one zeros this one has a pattern so you should have um, six zeros then a one then seven zeros then a one uh, this one is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so far. I didn't see the, is there a pattern on this one, or is it just supposed to go on without a pattern? Anybody figure that out? I think it just goes on, but there does not appear to be a pattern at all, but it just continues on, like pi. Pi is an example of an irrational number that continues on forever, but does not have any pattern whatsoever, much less a repeating pattern at the end. So all of these numbers, I believe, fall between these two values because they go up to the 3.78, and then they have another number after that. So 3.78, 3, 1, uh, 0, but then over here is the 3, 5, uh, 0, but then here's a 1. So they get a little bigger than if they just went up to the 8. So they're a little bigger than the uh, first number right here but smaller than this number. Okay, so then we just have to pick out which ones are rational. So these all fall between these two, which ones are rational. This one's irrational because its decimal expansion doesn't end in a repeating pattern. This one ending in zeros is rational because it ends in zeros. There's two like that. So this one and this one both end in zeros, so you should check those off. And this one ending in threes is supposed to have threes go on forever, so you'd pick that one also. These other two end in a pattern, but it's not a repeating pattern. So these other two at the end are irrational. Their patterns don't repeat. They're just patterns. Did that answer your question? Um, from Scott, may I show afterwards? Just okay, sounds good. Any other questions? Then let's pick up where we were in 2.7, and we'll also begin 3.1 today. What's that? 2.7 landscape 12. That might be what we're doing today. Let's take a look and see. Oh, thanks. No, I'm glad you asked this. This isn't one we're doing. We're thinking of a number that begins in this, and the xxx are digits that are hidden from view. What is the smallest our number could be? Did anybody figure out what the smallest it could be would be? Did anybody look at this yet? I don't think this one's due to the following week, right? So you have some chance to think about this yet. Yes? I just put zero for the digits that are missing. Yeah. So if you put zeros for the digits that are missing, then it won't get any bigger. So that's the smallest. So we would type in the whole number there, and then I wonder if we have to put the five zeros also. I would think so. Okay. And then on this one, the largest number would be if you put nines there, right? If you're only going to have those five other decimal places. So that's what they were looking for, that whole number plus the zeros or nines. Any other questions? I just put in the same thing that says I'm wrong. Do you have a different number right here though? You might have a, you probably have a different number to yes, start with. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna make a difference. So but it would end in either five zeros or five nines. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. just to, to I, I, I have a right, but I just want to understand a little better. There's mm -hmm. this uh, Mindscape 29. 29. It talks about um, pi. Okay. So um, the idea is that 
even if we look at the first billion digits of pi, which a computer has been in the process of printing out. Um, so the answer is that it doesn't prove that pi is irrational because maybe the billionth and one digit begins a pattern that repeats. Or maybe the billionth and one digit ends it, and we have zero there now, zero, zero, zero. Uh, so the answer here is it doesn't prove So digits might start to repeat. And what if we examine the first trillion digit, digits? We have the same thing. It's not sufficient for a proof because after that the digits could begin to repeat. The proof that pi is irrational is not proven by looking at the digits. The proof, because we couldn't, we couldn't look at the infinite digits. The proof of pi is irrational is uh, in looking at some of the ways that it is formed. Any other questions? I just misunderstand. I, when I look at those rational numbers with the repeating digit or pattern, I just always wonder, well, is the next pattern not rational, though? Because that's what I'm seeing with this pi, that eventually a pattern may begin and then cease. So. Um, so you're right, and that's what the problem is saying, that eventually a pattern could begin, and so we don't rely on looking at the computer printout of the billions of digits of pi. Instead, we have other proofs that show that the pi itself is irrational. Okay. But they're beyond the scope of the course, so we're not, we're not going to look at that. Um, but you could certainly look at that on your own if you want. So once the pattern is rational, it's bound to stay rational at once. But if it's not rational yet, it could always be rational. So, so really, we don't rely on the pattern at all okay. to prove that a number is rational, irrational. We rely on, is there a way for other numbers, um, is there a way to write it as a fraction? So we always go back to our definition. What is the definition of a rational number? A number that can be written as a fraction of integers. So that's how we prove a number is rational. We write it as a fraction and then Presto, we've proven that it is. Now, sometimes it gets confusing because you're trying to figure out, well, what is the author even talking about when he says 0.3333 dot, dot, dot? Does he mean it's always threes? And that is what the, that notation is supposed to mean. Um, if you're just looking at your calculator, though, you have something that might look like it goes on as a repeating pattern, and it doesn't necessarily. For example, another famous irrational number is e, which many of you have in your calculators. So here's e raised to the 1 power. And it looks like that's repeating 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, but it does not in fact. That is an irrational number. And if you just looked at this many digits, you'd think, oh, that's a repeating pattern. But it, it does not have a repeating pattern. Um, so, But you notice your calculator doesn't say dot, 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 as if that goes on forever. Um, so, yeah, knowing what someone's talking about and trying to get at when they write down the decimal expansion helps when you're trying to communicate. So we can show a rational number is rational by looking at its definition. And if we look at the decimal, the decimal expansion of rational numbers, who remembers what the decimal expansion of rational numbers does? Might as well put 2.7 down and put this in our notes. Who remembers? Yes. It repeats or terminates? Yes. The decimal expansion of irrational numbers. does not repeat or terminate. 
<laughs> okay. And we would look to see why that is. So we saw why that was by taking 45 and dividing it by 7, which we won't do again. But we saw that the decimal expansion had to begin repeating itself because when you divide 45 by 7, there's only, as, you, as you're doing your, div, your long division, your remainders have to fall between 0 and 6. Otherwise, you, you're not doing your division correctly. So your remainders fall between 0 and 6. Well, if they're 0, then you're done. And your um, decimal expansion terminates. But otherwise, if there's 1 through 6, after you have gone through 6 cycles, if not sooner, you've begun repeating. Because there's only six digits that you could have for your remainders before you start repeating. And, and that's why the decimal expansion of the rational numbers either terminates when you get a zero for a remainder or it begins to repeat after um, at least this many steps, whatever this number is. Any other questions? Well, what, what, what we're going to work on now is turning these repeating decimals back into rational numbers. Well, they are, I shouldn't say back into rational numbers. How to, how to turn the repeating decimal into a fraction. a fraction of integers. So that's the next step and that's the next thing to learn in section 2.7. So let's just pick one out. These are real easy to make up. You just make a decimal that repeats. So I'll put one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So write four point one two one two one two one two, etc. as a fraction of integers. Do any of you ever do this in your math classes? Anyone remember doing this? Well, what we do is we look at how many digits are repeating. So two digits are repeating. The one, two, one, two, two digits. Okay, so two digits, the one and the two. So uh, we multiply by 100. Okay, so the 100 has two zeros in it. So because there's two digits repeating, we pick 100 to multiply the 4.121212. And uh, as we do that, we're first going to name the 4.12 repeating the N. So we'll name that 4.121212 and so on, n, and then we'll take 100 times n. So as you multiply times 100, you can do this in your calculator as you want. Just remember, you can't put in 1212 forever in your calculator, so you're going to have to put that part on your own. Uh, as you put that in, in your calculator, the decimal place moves 2 to the right. So multiplying by 100 moves your decimal place 2 to the right. And you can think of that easily, right? 4 times 100 would be 400. So we just get a little more than that. Uh, and the 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 still goes on forever, though, because you just kind of are shuffling your decimal point over. We just moved over two units, but those, the 1, 2, 1, 2 still keeps going on. Okay. After we do that, then we subtract. So we take the 100N, which is the 412.121212 dot dot dot. 
and we subtract n. Now as you do that, you have to line up your decimal places. So I'm going to write next subtract, line up the decimals. So the decimal place in n was right after the 4. So I'm putting the 4 under the 2 in the 4.12. So line up your decimals so they're right in order. So you have the tens place under the tens place. Well, there was no tens place on the 1. You have the ones place under the ones place. Tens place would have been here. So we're subtracting. 100 n and then there's no number written here this is a 1 n when no number is written in front of the n so that's a 1 n 100 n minus a 1 n so 99 n then if you remember when you subtract by hand the 2 and the 2 subtract the 1 and the 1 subtract 2 2 1 1 2 2 1 1 all those Repeating 1, 2 is subtracted away. So to the right of the decimal, there's 0 now when they subtract. Uh, then you have the 12 minus 4 is 8. I borrowed the 1, so I bring down the 0 and the 4. Don't round off any as you do this. exclamation point because the whole point is that we're going to be writing as a um, a fraction and we're almost there right we now have an equation that we can solve just by dividing out 99 so divide both sides of the equation by 99 and n is 408 over 99 these are fun to check so check easily So when you have a decimal that's a repeating decimal like that, you can turn it back into back into a fraction made up of integers. Just pick the number of repeating places. How many digits are repeating? So here, one, two, two digits. That tells you what power of 10 to multiply by. So there were two zeros because there were two digits. Then if you line up your, um, your new number carefully with the original n and subtract, the multiply, the um, repeating digits will subtract away. We'll try another example. Do you have any questions first? This is something I want you to be able to do on a quiz, so we're going to look at a few examples to make sure you get the hang of this. So this time write 52.33333 dot 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 as a fraction of integers. Remember, integers are just whole numbers. I don't want someone to say, oh, I just have to write this as a fraction and write 52.33333 divided by 1. <laughs> Because that, that would be written as a fraction, but we want a fraction of integers here. So this time, as we look at the repeating part, there's just the number 3 repeating. So one digit repeats. That means we're going to multiply by 10. So one zero, because one digit is repeating. So we have 10 n would be 
and then I'm going to multiply by 3, so that moves my decimal place. I'm, I'm going to multiply by 10, so that moves my decimal place 1 to the right. So I have 523.3333. And then the 333 still keep going on forever to the right because I just shuffled over the decimal one place, and there's still infinitely many threes that are marching off to the right. So that's my 10n. Uh, this number right here, we are naming n, but I didn't write that in. Let's write that. That's n. So now we can take the 10n and subtract the 1n. So subtract 1n. Uh, and line up your decimals when you do that. So you put the 52 under the 23. You have to line up your decimals so that the digits are all in order. You have the ones place and the tens place all lined up. So we go ahead and subtract. As you do that, each three subtracts the three below, and they subtract away. And then you have three minus two is one. Twelve minus five is seven. And I borrowed one from the five, so that's a four. 10n minus 1n is 9n. If you prefer to do this in your calculator, just verify that you've lined up the, the decimal places correctly so that the threes all cancel. And then in your calculator, you could put 523 minus 52. So last of all, divide out 9. Some of these reduce, this one reduces. I don't know if the last one did or not. You don't have to reduce it for my class, but just it's nice to know that you can. And we'll check. So I'd like to have you try one of these to make sure you're getting the hang of it. And then you'll have to think about what you would write on your 3x5 card to remind you of what steps to take. So how about you try, hmm, here we go. Right, 5.273273 dot 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 as a fraction of integers. So if you get stuck, raise your hand. I'll come around and see how you're doing. Um, if you want to get, if you get done before the rest of us, then you can put it in your calculator and check. So 5.273273273 dot dot dot.
So this is your N, and then there's three repeating decimal places, so you should have picked a thousand. Three zeros to go with the three repeating decimal places. So your, de your decimal moves three places to the right, and that part you can put in your calculator as long as you remember that you didn't write in enough of the 273, 273 parts. So once you've multiplied by 1,000, subtract the original number n. So the original number is named n, and it's, it's a 1n. Uh, and we line it up. So I had a 5 decimal point, so I'm going to put the decimal point under the other decimal point. And the, the decimal points line up, and I put the 5 under the 3. And that causes the 273s to all line up like they need to. So when you subtract, they subtract away. Uh, so you can put this part in your calculator, 5273 minus 5, or you can do it by hand. So you end up with 999N equals 5,268. You just divide out the 999. So we can take our, our repeating decimals and turn them back into uh, rational fractions with integers in the numerator and denominator. Anybody have any questions? Okay, then I'm going to ask you, um, is the decimal expansion of a number unique? The decimal expansion of a number unique. In other words, when you have a number written in its decimal form, whether it's rational or irrational, is there another way to write it, or is that it? Was there just the one way to write it? Write down what you think, yes or no, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, or maybe sometimes, or maybe never. Anybody have any ideas on that? Anybody want to tell what they wrote? Yeah. Aren't there there's infinity space between numbers? So what, what that sort of like? Correlate to mean that there's infinity chance. There's infinity chances for a number to have its own decimal pattern or its own unique expansion of numbers. Because you can't you can't base it on the whole pigeonhole principle because it's it's in, it's a in, infinity. Infinite. So you're saying the decimal expansion is infinite. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So each. Okay. Each is unique. So each one is unique. So like the one we just looked at, for example, 
if you changed any of these numbers, you'd have a different number, wouldn't you? Like yeah. you've changed one of the threes to a four, all of a sudden you have a different number. Okay, so you're leaning toward, yes, it's unique. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else have any ideas? The class started with section 2.7 question last class asking if there's a number between 0.99999 repeating M1. Do you remember what you answered for there? Anybody? Mm -hmm. You answered yes? Mm -hmm. what, what number would be between 0.9999 repeating and 1? Mm -hmm. 0.9991. Let's see. And so the one possibility is like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if this number is between 0.9999 repeating and 1, then it has to be bigger than 0.999 repeating and smaller than the 1. Can anybody tell me a number that's bigger than 0.9999 1 and still smaller than 1? Mm hmm? Someone had an idea? Yeah. Okay. That would be bigger. So this, this number is closer to 1 than the uh, first prospect. Okay, so this one is closer to 1. The one that ending in 2 is closer to the 1. How about the point? 9999 compared to the point 99992. Remember the dot 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 means this is repeating. So it's point 0.9 with a bar over it. Is this number closer to 1 than point 0.9 repeating is? No, it's not, is it? Here, let's answer let's let's look for the answer to this question by having you take point nine 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 repeating can you take that and write it as a fraction of integers the same way that you did with the five point two seven three two seven three two seven three so that will be a good practice for you anyway. So go ahead and rewrite 0.99999 repeating as a fraction of integers. If this is your n, what did you multiply by? 10. Yeah, good. 10, because one digit's repeating. Anybody else get that point 0.9 repeating is actually 1? Well, uh, is that true? That doesn't sound right. I mean, they look very different. 
Did we just do something kind of weird, like one of those those <coughs> math jokes that people try and ask you, and really there's kind of like some kind of sneaky thing going on in the back? <laughs> Let's check our algebra. Okay, so this is n. So we didn't we didn't do anything there, but give the number a name. So that's not anything tricky. Okay, that's okay. Uh, then we multiply both sides of the new equation by 10, and that's okay. You can do that in math. Uh, and then we subtracted the same thing from both sides of that equation. So on the right side, we subtracted 0.999999, but that was n. So when we subtract 1 on the left, we're subtracting the same thing. So that step's okay. And then we divide both sides of the equation by 9. That's good. We're still doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So that means the original number is 1. So n is 1, and n equals 0.9999. So that's saying that the two are, in fact, equal. And that is true. So that looks really weird, but in fact, it is true. And you could go ahead and sh show somebody that if you want to get in a good argument. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't remember if my, uh, my husband and I argued about this or not. We always have these fun math talks after class. Um, so let's go back to our question. Is there a number between 0.9999 repeating and 1? No. No. Because they're the same. They're the same number. That answers this question as well. Is the decimal expansion of a number unique? Well, most of the time, <laughs> most of the time it is unique. The, the, the exception is when you end in 0.999 repeating. So we'll say not always. So we can, we can write 0.99999 dot 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 or 1, and those are the same thing. So if you had another number that ended in 0.999 repeating, like 5.9999 repeating, that would be 6. So numbers that end in 9's repeating forever are equivalent to the integer that comes next. So that gives me another question to ask you. At your desk, can you please write down the number that is next to 1? Anybody want to tell what they wrote down? Did anybody write anything? No, there's none. No. Well, in my first class they said, um, what did they say I wrote it down? Why isn't 1.01 .01 next to 1? I think they just said it because I didn't write it down. Why, why isn't 1.01, .01, for example, next to 1? Can anybody tell me a number closer to 1 than that? I should be able to ask all of you. <laughs> What, do you know a number closer to 1? No. Does anybody know a number closer to 1? Yes. Is it binary? Nope. doesn't have to be binary. Is it, is it, it, is, it is 1 or it, it isn't close to it. It has to, be, it has to be 1, but it can't be close. Is that why there's no number next to 1? Because any number we pick, we can find a number closer. So what would be a number that falls between 1 and 1.01? 1 .01? So 
So something smaller than 1.01 and bigger than 1. Can anybody think what that would be? Yes. 1.001. Sure. 1.001. Okay. Good. Okay. So we got closer to 1. We were 100th away. Now we're 1,000th away. So is the 1.001 next to 1? No. Okay. What would be a number that comes between 1 and 1.001? 1 .001? Do, you, do you know this one? 1.0001. Yeah, good. So is this number next to one? <laughs> no, and now I see head sh shaking, no, that's right. There's, there's no number next to another number because you can always squeeze one in. So that's what we were talking about on Wednesday when we talked about there's always another number in between two numbers. And you can pick rational numbers or irrational numbers. Here I have, I have some numbers, um, some statements for you to Decide if they're true or false. So which of the following are true? And there'll be four statements. And we'll start way on the left because then we can use a lot of diddle marks and not have to write so much. Between every two irrational numbers, <coughs> between every two irrational numbers, there is an irrational number. So hopefully you wrote fairly small so you can fit that all on one line. Between every two irrational numbers, there is an irrational number. That's the first statement. Uh, the second statement is the same, except we have rational numbers. Between every two rational numbers, oops, between every two rational numbers, there is a rational number. Number three, between every two rational numbers, there is an irrational number. So between every two rational numbers, there is an irrational number. And four, between every two irrational numbers, oops, I started writing and I could have used dittos. Between every two irrational numbers, there is a rational number. So, circle the ones that are true. There's four statements. Should number one be circled? Let's see. Let's do an example. Uh, we have a couple of irrational numbers. So how about 1.0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, dot, dot, dot. And now I need one that's a little bigger. So I'll say one point 
1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Who thinks there is an irrational number between those two? Or maybe we should start easier. Who thinks there's a rational number between those two? So then we'd be looking at statement number four. We have two irrational numbers. Can anyone find a rational number between those? So the decimal expansion can just stop and then you don't have to think so hard. What would be a rational number that falls between those two? So it has to be bigger than 1.0 and smaller than 1.1. 1 .1. Anyone have an example? What? What would be? Well, it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, like. Go, go further than 12, or are we, or does that say that it, it continues? Yeah, this is supposed to continue. Yeah, but I don't know how it could be. So a rational yeah. number doesn't have to go on forever, so we can just think of think small. Yes? Uh, would it be 1.0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3? Sure. And just keep going. So, um, so if you have 1.0, 1, 2, 3, that's bigger than the smaller number and smaller than the bigger number. And if it kept going, um, so for, then it's going to be the same. So I'm going I'm to stop here and put a zero there. Now it's smaller yet. Uh, and then start over again. So now I made it irrational out of that rational. So actually all of these should be circled. And that's what we talked about on Wednesday. The, the number line is infinitely dense with rational numbers and infinitely dense with irrational numbers. You can always dig down because of the way you construct these numbers and find a number in between any two numbers. So circle all of these and think about infinity because that's what we're going to pick up in chapter 3 on Monday. Think about infinity and I'll ask you your thoughts about infinity on Monday. I'll see you then. Have a good weekend. <laughs>